okay now that we have everything installed and set up we can create our web project I should point out that the reason why we're creating this webcast is we had a request from a customer who's an ASP.NET programmer but who's quite new to ASP.NET and isn't too familiar with OO concepts so I'm going to base the video on a very light introduction to OO as well um, I'm gonna, and I'm going to keep things as simple as possible for him um, because he's the guy who requested this video so first of all we'll create a website and ASP.NET website and we'll call it something like EF my SQL and we'll create that and we'll just I always like to run these things just to make sure that they fire up and there we go so we've got a very simple ASP.NET website there one thing I like to do thinking about it is switch over to use IIS Express that's uh, a lot better than the built-in Cassini server okay now that that is done we're ready to get going so the first thing we do is on the default page we will throw in in fact no what we will do first is we will connect to our database so I'll add a connection and we want to choose MySQL database the connector that we've installed and I'll just put in the IP address if I can remember it and username and my password and then I should be able to select my database and that's us connected now in this database um, it's basically a WordPress database which runs our domain scanners website but we've got a, a Twitter table in here which every time we make a post on our website it automatically tweets um, a link to our post so for this demonstration I'll just grab the data from this table which is on our our website and we'll throw that into a, a grid view and we'll go for this column here the, the actual text of the tweets so that's what we want to achieve through entity framework so now that we've got a connection to our database we'll create our EF model so I'll switch back to Solution Explorer and I'll add a new item and we want to create an ADO.NET entity data model and we'll call that EF model now we get this wizard so we'll generate directly from the database uh, this is a very quick introduction video I won't go into creating empty models and, and creating all the entities manually uh, so we'll generate from the database um, that's the correct database there we'll include everything for simplicity and we click next and this should now retrieve the tables from the database and here we can select what tables views and stored procedures we want to include so I'll just to make things simple I'll select the, the table which has the information we want to pull out I'll click finish and let that wear away and that's our model created now we can see that we've got our entity here so that's all just how we want it and now we can code against that so what we'll do is let's go into design mode and let's throw a grid view grid view grid view grid view let's throw a grid view onto our form 
and we'll wire this up in code as opposed to creating a, a data source here. So I'll flick over to code view and the first thing we want to do oops, is put in a using statement to our model just to make things a little easier. And now we're just going to use uh, a using command which uh, creates an object with a reference to that entity and a little bit of link language independent query language to retrieve the data from that model and data bind that to our grid view. So it's very simple to do. So there's our model, uh, and there's our entities, which is what we want. And bring up our grid view, and we'll set the data source of the grid view to what we pull via link out of the entity. Here we can see all the fields which represent the, the fields in the entity. So we could say we can order that by created by. So we have IntelliSense as effect, which is a lot better than if you tap in plain out plain old SQL. And then we'll select T and then we'll bind that to the grid view. So grid view one. to bind and then we'll run our code and as you can see we've now pulled our data out of our MySQL database now to clean things up a little what we can do now is extract that code we just wrote into its own data access layer so, and that'll help demonstrate a, a little bit of code reuse uh, for our client. So, let's get going with that. So, what we'll do is just stop that from running. And we're going to create, oops, we're going to create a new class. Excuse me. So, add new item. And we'll create a new class and we'll call this uh, DB layer. Uh, normally, what I would do um, with something like this, I'd actually have the whole entity framework in its own separate project, but I'm trying to keep things uh, as simple as possible for our said client um, and just touch the surface of. Um, object orientation and uh, abstracting and offloading out to a, a database layer. So we'll create a static class here and we'll call we'll have this as a list and we'll return a type of uh, let's use a model and we'll return a type of uh, of that class and we'll call this get tweets um, and then we can just copy oh, it's that part there really, I need to copy So if we say using TX equals and 
and then here we can just simply return what we need I'll paste that as a list so that's abstracted that quite nicely excuse me I keep on clicking I'm having a bad click day right so there is our class and then here we can tidy this up by now simply saying assigning the data source to our DB layer and get tweets and then we bind that and that's cleaned up our code so we could just use that in separate code files and then that demonstrates a little bit of code code we use there so that should give us exactly the same effect and there we go so hopefully that's enough to get our client started with entity framework and mysql databases um, and link there's plenty of resources on the web for link here we're just reading from a database but it's very easy to write to a database as well link comes in extremely handy when there's lots of relational tables and um, so good luck and thanks for watching mm -hmm.